welcome back students in this session i'll be starting with cell unit of life in detail so these videos and subsequent videos are mainly aiming at those students who are writing neat 2021 so from cell unit of life onwards i'll be picking up the important topics and most difficult topics and I will be discussing them in detail. And towards the end of my lecture, I will be also discussing some important questions. Once I finish that particular unit, I will be discussing important questions from that. So, one request to all my students is, you have to watch these videos every session completely. If you don't watch them completely, you will not have the continuity of watching. And if you want to understand a topic, you will not be able to understand. Remember one thing children, as many as sources you are exposed to, sources I mean to teachers, sources I mean to teachers. So as many as sources or to teachers you are exposed to, your concepts will be more clear. This is not an entertainment channel obviously. So you cannot keep forwarding it and then try to skip some important points. So any topic when you want to understand, it is very important that you have to watch the video from the beginning till the end. Then your interest will be consistent and you will be able to definitely understand that topic. So I hope all the students will follow this. So let us come back to the our topic. We will start with the topic cell unit of life. So in this particular unit we have three chapters actually so first is cell unit of life second is biomolecules and the third is cell division so first we will start with cell unit of life so here first we will do with what is say introduction introduction so in the introduction part we can say first what is a cell so any living organism, any living organism is composed of cells. Any living organism is composed of cells. Cells will form tissues. And based on the cells, the organisms can be either unicellular organisms or they are multicellular organisms. They are either unicellular organisms or they are multicellular organisms. You know unicellular organisms are those which have only single cell. But this single cell, this unicellular organisms, they can perform all functions. These unicellular organisms can perform all functions which are required by the living organism. These can perform all the functions. That means it is self-sufficient. That is what is unicellular. Like you have Chlamydomonas in plants or amoeba or euglena, paramecium. All these are unicellular organisms which can exist independently. Similarly, multicellular organism will have many cells. And its function depend upon all the cells together. All the cells will form tissues. And the functioning of the organism will depend upon the tissues uh, together. So that is unicellular and multicellular. So anything less than, anything less than complete structure of cell. Anything less than complete structure of cell will not have independent 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 existence this particular statement is given in the textbook you have to study and underline anything less than complete structure of cell will not have independent existence that means if the cell structure is not complete then it cannot live independently like here we can give the example of viruses Viruses are acellular. They do not have any complete cell structure. 
So therefore they cannot exist independently. They require always the help of a host. They have to enter into the host in order to perform their function. So for functioning of any organism, a complete cell is a must. A complete cell is very, very important. So therefore, therefore the living organisms, living organisms are made of cells are made of cells or cell is structural unit of living organism. Cell is a structural unit of living organism. So the functioning of any living organism will depend upon its individual cells. That is what is the structure. Now, next what we will see, what is the study of cells called as? What is the study of cells called as? So, we all know the term cytology. Cytology, simply we can define it as the study of study of cells. Study of cells, we can call it as a cytology. But we also come across another term called as cell biology. We also come across another term called as cell biology. So cell biology is a broader perspective, a broader view. So more uh, broadly, we can say cell biology. That means it includes all cells, their structure, their structure, function, function and also the techniques involved in study of cells. Also, the techniques involved in study of cells. So, that is called as a cell biology. So, these days we use the word cell biology but not just cytology because cytology means it is only the study of cells, structure of cells. Whereas, cell biology includes not only structure, function, but all the techniques involved. What do you mean by techniques? Like we use different chemicals to study cells. We also use different types of microscopes to understand cells. So all these come under techniques. So that is, that is called as a cell biology. Now, now let us go to what is the brief history of the cell. Historical aspect. How the cell or how the cytology was developed. How the cytology was developed developed. So, first study in the field is by Zacharias Janssen who was the first one to invent, invent compound microscope. First one to invent compound microscope. First one to invent compound microscope. This is sometime in 1590. This is sometime in 1590. Then the second one, second important finding which all of you know is Robert Hooke. Robert Hooke. Robert Hooke was the one, first one. He was the first one to observe cells. First one to observe observe cell. But which type of cell he observed? Which type of cell was observed by him is a dead cell. A dead cell taken from a cork tissue. A dead cell taken from a cork tissue. Cork tissue, cork is obtained from the plant Quercus suber. This is the scientific name of cork plant Quercus suber. And this study was done in 1665. So that means the Robert Hooke observed only a dead cell. Cork is a dead tissue. And he recorded all his findings in the book called as book written by him. Book written by him is Micrographia. Book written by him is Micrographia. Graphia. That is the book written. He recorded all his uh, findings, his observations in this book. 
that the next one next important finding is anton von leven hawk another scientist anton von leven hawk this is sometime in the year 1675 course years are not very very important but few important findings you can remember the years so anton von leven hawk was the first one to observe a living cell first one to observe a living cell in his crude microscope in his crude microscope so he constructed a microscope and in his microscope he was the first one to observe a living cell so he observed living cells of bacteria first and rbcs and protozoans bacteria rbcs and protozoan cells were first observed by anton von leeuwenhoek though the first cell was observed by robert hooke but first living cell so here a question can be given first cell and first living cell this distinction you should be able to make very clearly if first cell is asked in the question you have to give robert hooke if first living cell then you have to give anton von leeuwenhoek then the then the next finding next finding by few other scientists we will do it the scientist gru and malfigi the scientist gru and malfigi these two scientists they laid foundations they laid foundations for anatomy they laid foundations for anatomy you know anatomy means study of internal tissue so they laid foundations for anatomy that was by gru and Mar malfigi then next robert robert brown robert brown was the first one to observe nucleus first one to observe nucleus nucleus he observed in the plant tradescantia nucleus he observed in the plant tradescantia this tradescantia plant is a monocot plant it is a monocot plant so robert brown was the first one to observe the nucleus in which plant in tradescantia in monocot plant then the other finding corti and fontana corti and fontana these two scientists was first observed a jelly like substance jelly like substance in the nucleus jelly like substance in the nucleus and this later we know was called as nucleoplasm the next one fontana fontana observed nucleolus nucleolus was observed by fontana the next scientist do jardin do jardin observed a substance similar like jelly like substance in the cell which was called as sarcode he called this substance jelly like substance in the cell as sarcode and later the scientist perkinch perkinch or whatever you call perkinch he called this sarcode as protoplasm he coined the term protoplasm he coined the term protoplasm he coined the term protoplasm so it was given by perkins who coined the term protoplasm then lastly we can say last one another last important scientist name 
Hanstein. Hanstein. He was the one to coin the term. Coin the term protoplast. He was the one to coin the term protoplast. Protoplast is a cell excluding a cell excluding cell wall. A cell excluding cell wall that is called as a protoplast. So a cell without cell wall. That means only the living content of the cell that is called as a protoplast. So Hanstein was the one who coined this term, who coined the term protoplast. Okay, these are the brief history or historical studies with respect to cell biology, cytology. Now next we will see what is a cell theory. What is a cell theory? Cell theory was proposed by two important two scientists, Sclidan and Schwann. Cell theory was proposed by these two scientists, Sclidan and Schwann. Sclidan was a German botanist. Sclidan was a German botanist. And Schwann was a German zoologist. Schwann was a German zoologist. Sweden was a German botanist. John Schwann was a German zoologist. So Sweden, the study of Sweden, he observed plants. He observed plant cells. He observed plant cells and he observed that the plant cells are, they form tissues. Plant cells form tissues. Schwann studied in animal cells. Schwann studied animal cells and there he observed that the animal cells are covered by a thin layer covered by thin layer which later it was called as later it was called as plasma membrane later this was called as plasma membrane so animal cells were later which were covered by thin layer later this thin layer was called as plasma membrane and schwann also observed that the plant cells are covered by, plant cells are covered by cell wall. Plant cells are covered by cell wall. So, based on these studies, they formulated, they gave two statements. Sliden and Schwann, they gave two statements which are given as, the two statements of the cell theory are Cell is a structural unit. Cell is a structural unit. The second statement, cell is a functional, functional unit. Cell is a structural unit and also cell is a functional unit. But the drawback of this theory was they could not explain how the new cells are formed, how new cells are formed. So the idea of formation of new cells was given by another scientist, Rodolf Virchow. Rodolf Virchow proposed a theory called omnicellular e cellular. That means cells arise from cells arise from pre-existing cells. Cells arise from pre-existing cells. So that is given by Rodolf Virchow. 
So based on this, a third statement was also added. Based on the Rodolf Virtue study, a third statement was also added to cell theory. So what is the third statement added is, cell is a reproductive, cell is also a reproductive unit. Cell is also a reproductive unit. So, three statements. After Radon virtue, three statements are given. Cell is a structural unit, cell is a functional unit and cell is also a reproductive unit. Now, lastly, we will see what is exception to cell theory. Exception. Exception to cell theory are viruses. Viruses, they do not obey cell theory. Viruses do not obey cell theory because they are the non-living or acellular. They are non-living or acellular, so they do not obey cell theory. So with this, I conclude this session, children. So in my next session, continuing with this topic, I will be doing shapes and sizes. We are going strictly according to the sequence given in NCRT textbook. So next, we will do the shapes and sizes of the cells. So thank you very much, children. Have a good day. <clears throat>